Let's begin our journey now by looking at the Azure account hierarchy. And if you're in an enterprise, you will have something that is unique, uh, which is an Azure enterprise you know, agreement. And so you actually have an additional portal that people just maybe swipe in their credit card won't actually have. And that's the Azure enterprise portal. And that's available at ea.azure.com. And in that portal, you can actually go in and create various departments and then go ahead and create sub accounts inside of your enterprise. But for a lot of people, you actually start with just the account section. If you're sort of just trying out uh, this course to learn Azure, you've probably used a free trial or you've swiped your credit card, you will be at the account portal, which is at accounts.azure.com. And there's a billions and usage link on there, which takes you to the, the place where you set up your account in itself. Uh, and so you will go there to manage your account and your subscriptions underneath. Uh, speaking of subscriptions, once you've created your subscription, you will then want to access the Azure portal to actually put resources inside of it. And you do that at portal.azure.com. So this might get a little bit confusing at first, but just remember, enterprise, we start at ea.azure.com. For my actual Azure account, where I'm going to put things in, I go to account.azure.com. And then for my actual subscriptions, once I've created my subscription in that account at account.azure.com, I go to portal.azure.com, which you'll see throughout all the demos is where we are when we're deploying resources. Following that, inside of subscriptions, I can deploy resource groups, which are essentially containers that I can put my resources in and I can assign RBAC permissions to them, which you'll learn more about throughout the course. That's how we assign access. And finally, as I mentioned in the resource group, we have our resources. So multiple layers there. They've also introduced the concept of management groups recently that's not on the exam yet per se, but that allows you to sort of take your various subscriptions and group them together and group up policy because what tends to happen in large organizations is as you build lots and lots of subscriptions and resource groups and you want to sign policy and make sure everybody you know gets the right rights and their various groups and subscriptions it can get really really confusing so they have brought out management groups which allows you to kind of group up subscriptions and assign you know the same permissions and policies to them as well but for the most part you know we'll definitely give you this document as one of the attachments in the course so if you're just unsure where to go these are the the main links and should clear that up for you if we go a little bit further and look at the account to subscription relationships uh, when we have our azure enterprise enrollment we have one to many relationship with departments so i can have many departments inside of my azure ea and i don't have to have any departments in there it's just a way of organizing depending on the way your organization is set up Within departments, then I can have one to many accounts, or I could just have one to many accounts to the enterprise enrollment to begin with if I didn't have departments. Following accounts, that's when I create my subscriptions themselves. And it always makes sense to have a plan for your subscription. So what you want to do is know when you're going to add a new subscription or you add in it because you have to completely separate out roles from a role-based access point of view or you add in subscriptions because perhaps you hit limits. Uh, those are some of the reasons that, that you would add a new subscription. If we look at the enterprise hierarchy example in a little bit more detail, here's what it might look like. We have our enterprise enrollment, we have department A, B, and C. Maybe this is finance, HR, maybe IT is a general department as well inside of our EA. And then I can have sub accounts. Maybe I have them for dev, for tests, you know, and then within there, I have various subscriptions that, that I want to manage and, and put resources in. If you want to see some common scenarios, it helps to look at the major three that Microsoft showcases. One is a functional example where you've got your enterprise at the top. We've got things like finance and IT as our functional uh, departments there. And then we have account owners and subscriptions in there you can see are based on projects you know, within those those specific departments. So production websites, project one test, project one dev. If we look at something a little bit more business division orientated, so again, I've got departments, but I've got like auto and aerospace now as opposed to like very distinct finance and IT. So we've got business divisions within the enterprise that then perhaps my subscriptions below are based more on the on the applications themselves. And then another one that does come up a lot is actually geographic. We deal with a lot of global companies. Uh, and when we work with them, you know, they have departments in North America, in Europe, in Asia, and then they'll typically separate out that way, then create accounts within there, and then the sub projects as the subscriptions within those accounts. We break down the EA type of accounts for a moment, and we look along the top, we have enterprise admin, 
department admin, account owner, and potentially a service admin as well. And if we look at the enterprise admin, you know, they have the ability to add other admins, uh, other enterprise admins, department admins, and account owners. They can add and edit departments, and they can add or associate accounts to the enrollment themselves. Can they add subscriptions? Well, no, but they could add themselves as an account owner, and that account owner could then create subscriptions. So if we just quickly move over to the account owner column, uh, you can see there that they can add service admins. They can't add departments, so they're not part of that. You know, they don't have the ability to organize the EA, uh, but they can add subscriptions as you get further down. So again, the account owner can't add more accounts inside the enterprise agreement, but they can add subscriptions. The enterprise admin can create accounts, and they could technically make themselves an account owner, and then they could create subscriptions, but by default, you sort of have this delineation between enterprise admin and account you know, admin as well. Now, in between that, we can have that department admin. So if I'm using that model where I have departments, the enterprise admin could create some departments, and people in those departments could then create accounts, but only in their specific department and so that's really really key there you know how much you know access do you want to give out how much you know ability to create services do you want to give out to the departments you know a lot of it is determined if you trust that department if you think they have the ability to execute successfully in Azure and hopefully they're taking training as well uh, but that's why they have these roles in place all of them on the bottom you can see typically have the ability to view their usage and charges and view and remain in balances. Uh, only the EA can really do that because that's typically based off like an enterprise commitment that Microsoft sales team and the customer have made together. One of the key items you'll need to get going with Azure is an Azure account. And as you can probably tell by now from some of the previous lectures, there are a number of account options available to you. In this demonstration, we're going to focus on creating a simple trial account to get you going. So we'll start off in our web browser. Okay, and here we are in the web browser. And as you can see, I'm at azure.microsoft.com slash en dash us slash free. You can also just Google that, you know, Azure free account, and it will take you to this page. And the first thing you'll see is it says, create your Azure free account today, get started with 12 months of free services. And if you scroll down, you'll see what you get with the free account which is 12 months of services, but $200 of credit. So all the services that we use throughout the course, and if you're exploring with Azure, will cost a certain amount of money. Uh, that will get taken away from your $200 of credit. But some services are always free, and they will always be available. So if you haven't already used a trial account, I encourage you to get one because it will save you a bit of money through the course. If you've already used one, then I'm afraid you're just going to have to you know, swipe the credit card and pay the small fees when you provision services in Azure. Uh, but hopefully this will, will get you underway if you haven't had a trial account yet. Now if you go ahead and click start free, it will then prompt you to sign in with a Microsoft account. And at this point, you know, simply log in with your Microsoft account if you already have one, or if you don't have one, go ahead and click create one. Type in your email address. Type in a password. And you'll get a code sent to your email address, which you'll need to type in here. So simply refresh your email account, grab that code from there, and punch it in here. And then decide if you want to receive the Microsoft promotional emails or not. Go ahead and click Next. And it'll ask you to just type in this prompt to make sure you are a, a person actually doing it and not a bot, as you've probably seen from other websites, and click Next again. At this point, it also asks you if you want to stay signed in. So this will reduce the number of times you're asked to sign in. This is very useful, otherwise you'll get prompted repeatedly as you sign into different Microsoft services. So we'll click yes for that. And then at this point, you can see Azure free account sign up, start with your $200 of credit. At this point also, if you already had a free account on that email address, it will take you to a screen to ask you to sign up for a pay as you go and input your credit card details. But at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and continue typing in my information. And after you type in your phone number, you'll hit text me or call me and it will send a verification code to you, which you also need to punch in here. That's just verifying your phone number. Okay, and then you'll need to enter a credit card for the account as well. So I'm just going to skim through this. 
and after you've entered the credit card information and click next it will then prompt you to accept the agreement this is the subscription agreement the offer details that surround the free offer that you're being given and the privacy statement so either read through all those and then when you're done go ahead and click the box here and then click sign up okay when all that's completed you'll see you're ready to start with Azure and you can go ahead and go to the portal okay here we are welcome to Microsoft Azure uh, you can start the tour that'll give you a tour around everything here and we can choose maybe later if we don't want to do that now and then on the top right you can see this is the account that you've signed into uh, and it also prompts you to say hey you've got $200 of credit remaining in fact if we go to all services as well and choose subscriptions so we can type in subscriptions or you can just select it on the right here from the general menu I would favorite this as well to the menu on the left hand side so you click the star that favorites it for you because you'll go to subscriptions a lot throughout the course uh, click subscriptions and you will see in here your free trial that is available we can click the free trial and here you can see the subscription it'll break down all of the different costs etc uh, your free credit expires in 30 days that we currently have here if I click on manage this will then take you to the account page which is a little bit different to the portal so what you'll notice if we click back to the free trial portal that we have here this is portal.azure.com and this other page it takes you to is account.azure.com so the account section is where you'll do things like add payments you know set up billing alerts and things like that uh, and you can see here the subscription status on this one 30 days left 200 dollars in credits remaining which basically aligns to that free trial as mentioned before uh, but then when we want to go ahead and execute on anything we just go back to the free trial at this point over here now if we want to give other people access to it as well simply go down to Azure Active Directory and you'll also see that you have different users available to you and there's only going to be one currently so if I click users in the default directory uh, you'll see this is the default user that gets created when we created the subscription now I can create new users at this point I can also create new guest users so I can invite people with just their like, personal email address as well and give them access to our Active Directory that's created in here now you will see more of Azure Active Directory in future modules but just know if you're looking to you know share this account with somebody else that you're studying with this is where you would go to do that uh, and then if you go back to subscriptions again so I'm going to scroll down you'll see it's in the favorites now because we added it if I click subscriptions and click this free trial subscription if I want to give somebody access to this you'll see the access control section here so I click access control uh, and while I do have Azure Active Directory to create users etc I do need to assign rights to the subscription if I want somebody to be able to access it and have you know full administrative rights over it so I can click add role assignment and at this point I would select the role and if I wanted them to be complete owner of the subscription same as you have by default you would click the owner role if I want them to have a lot of rights but not be able to give access out to other people I would choose the contributor role and if I just wanted to give them read access rights I would choose the reader role now there's a whole bunch of now there's a whole bunch of other role assignments as well those are also covered later on in the course but for now just know about these three and if I click owner what I would do then is assign access to either an Azure AD user group or service principal and if I'd created that user from the Azure Active Directory section I just showed you that user would appear here and then I could basically assign them the access but for right now it's an empty account so there's nothing to assign it's only me you know my email address that essentially is in there right now uh, and so with that this concludes this demonstration and hopefully we'll get you up and running getting your trial account set up so you can continue on with the course